This channel supports Extra Life in its efforts to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. For more information about how to donate and join in their efforts, go to the link displayed here. Extra Life. Play games. Heal kids. What up everybody, this is your boy Black Magus and Game of Thrones Season 5 Episode 2. So, after the first episode we find ourselves with Arya being part of the main focus as she makes it over to Bravos. Um, by the way, I thought that's a cool rendition of the statue of Bravos. Um, I really thought, um, however they CGI'd it, uh, it was really well done. It looked really good. Um. And Bravos looked like an awesome place. Uh, kind of how I pictured it uh, from the books, for sure. So, Arya goes there and she's taken to the Black and White Temple to find... Uh, what's his name? I can never um, pronounce it right. But the guy who she met and who helped her escape in season... Was it? Four, three, or four? It was three. It's been a while since we've seen him, haven't it? Because she ended up being with um, the dog, the hound, for um, most of season four. Uh, so, yeah, it was season three, wasn't it? Huh. Didn't realize it was that long since we seen dude. Um, but anyway, so she gets there and they tell her, like, no, he's not there. You're come looking for the wrong thing. And so she's left to wander the streets of Bravos to try to survive. Um, meanwhile, Danny's having issues because the Sons of the Harpies aren't too particularly happy with the way things are. They're not feeling her rule right now. And they express it by killing one of her um, Unsullied. So you have this big hunt for them and all of that. Uh, you have her boo thing out with uh, Grey Worm trying to... It is Grey Worm, isn't it? I don't know why I'm all of a sudden forgetting names from the Game of Thrones series. Probably because it's been so long since the show has come back. And it's been so long since we had a book. God damn it, George R. R. Martin. Hurry up and finish the goddamn book. Jeez. Oh my god, that dude... Like, stop being a rock star. I honestly think that it's not that it's a process thing. I just think that he's just living the lap of luxury, enjoying the huge success of the TV show and the attention that he gets that he's in rock star mode. And that's worse because before the Game of Thrones TV show put the series on the um, platform, he already was slow as shit with the books. Now he's just like, fuck it. I don't even need the books anymore. I'm getting paid now. God damn him. Anyway, I'm moving back. So they're investigating, trying to find out um, things about the Sons of the Harpy. And there's a big debate on how to deal with them. Um, a lot of the people who she helped are of the mind that, hey, fuck them. They kept this city full of slaves and kept the people subjugated. Put them down and all that. Just go out, take them, take them out, show no mercy to them. Um, if the former slave masters are that upset that they're working with these people and having them help them cause chaos, then you probably need to take them out too. Meanwhile, um, Sir Barrister, he's like, no, we can't do that because remember, this is pretty much what led to you being here was... Your forefathers, your, I think it was her grandfather, um, the Mad King, he went about things in a way where he f was just like a cold-blooded tyrant who would just do some of the like most damnedest things to people who he felt betrayed him, whether it was true or not, and turned the people against him. And ultimately, that's what led to his demise. You know, he feels, feels like whatever happened, we need to be just about this. We need to give everybody fair trials and all that so that we could show that we're not just here just to be conquerors, just to be like the people who were in charge before, the slave masters. You know, we're not them. We want to establish justice and 
real law in this um, country. And she, of course, leads the barrister, which is pretty cool because that is that is the right, of course. Situation like this, stuff like that tends to fall apart, which it eventually did as she was led to kill one of the earliest slaves that she helped, who was like, you know, one of her closer people who, after they found a spy for the Sons of the Harpy, they were going to put him on trial to, like, show, like, look, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a fair trial. We're not just going to, like, kill you, but we're just going to let you know there will be justice and so on. No, dude's like, fuck that. Cause he kept telling her, you need to just kill him. You need to just kill him. You know, think about all the stuff they did to us as slaves. Think about how we felt when you came to freed us. You know, you need to just kill him. So he decided to take matters in his own hand and kill him. Well, he put daddy in the predicament where this guy just committed murder. And normally, back then, when you murdered people, you had to be executed. Because taking a life unjustly... Well, that was usually the penalty. Your life had to be forfeit for doing that. And so she was put in a situation where she had to publicly execute this dude. And the crowd's just sitting there screaming, mercy, no, don't do it. Please don't kill him and all that. But it's like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to, like, completely piss off the sons of the harpies and the other people and have them step up their war against you and trying to you know kill off everybody in a like you know manner of subterfuge but you know they would intensify their attacks or do you piss off the people but show that hey there is balance it's not just a one-sided thing both sides have to adhere to the law well she decided to show them that both sides had to adhere to the law Dude got his head cut off, and of course the crowd didn't react to that. Well, the rich folk, they were kind of like, okay, uh, all right, that's something, I guess. But, you know, the former slaves, they just started to hiss and boo her and all that and start throwing stuff at her. They pretty much rioted on her, um, which, you know, not surprised because <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but it's kind of like it is in real life. People who don't have power don't tend to be able to see beyond a certain scope kind of like with how we are here with the government people don't never necessarily see the grand picture they just see the immediate effects the immediate effect was dude got killed so to them oh she's hating she's trying to like turn her back on them no she's not dude broke the law he's not above the law nobody is above the law that was her point but nobody wants to see it that way because it doesn't agree to what they felt should have been done. So she's now sitting on a true powder keg over there in Marin. Um, at Tyrion had his appearance. Um, got to see uh, him on the road to Marin trying to get to Danny. Um, he's still not buying what the uh, what uh, Varen is saying. Valerius, Valerius, damn, why am I fucking up names all of a sudden? Either way, he's not buying what the eunuch is saying, and he's still trying to drink himself to death, but hopefully Tyrion will get himself around. And it's funny, I love the segue between the line where um, he was saying, I need to take a walk, and dude was like, do you really think that's fair? And he's like, well, I know my sister's trying to kill me, but what's she going to do? Have all the dwarves in the world killed, and then you see somebody drop a... F head of a dwarf on the table where they tried to make it up to look like Tyrion um, didn't work so well and she was like that's not him and uh, <laughs> she of course was pissy about that They're, those guys were lucky she didn't decide to take their life now as far as Cersei is concerned the power struggle begins she's now in a position where she feels like hey there's no one else around me my dad's gone Jamie's not in league for power I am pretty much in control of things, but her uncle, he's of another mind, and he's like, wait, what are you doing here once we sat down for counsel? You can't, you're not the king's hand, and she was like, well, since I'm the regent mother, I'm, you know, in control, and he's like, okay, I dig that, but you're not really in power, you, there, and since there's no hand, someone needs to be established, 
and she's just like no I'm she's just basically trying to make them all know that hey I'm the woman in charge and so Kevin is like look seriously seriously I'm not playing this game with you um I'm not even going to, uh, you can't command me or compel me to do anything. I listen to the king. If the king says it's so, then it's so. Until then, I'm going back to Castle Rock because I'm not getting in this, into this with you. Because he knows what Cersei is. Everybody knows who he is. You know, he followed his brother because he loved his brother. He honored his brother. And to be quite honest, Tywin, you know, the son of a bitch he was. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. He, you know, he for all his vices, the guy knew his business. So, you know, couldn't blame him for that. But he knows what Cersei is. And Cersei's not, don't have it. Cersei thinks she has it. Cersei wants to believe that she's the best. She's the smartest. Blah, blah, blah. But no, she's a pretty much, she's pretty much a impetuous child. But she doesn't see that. She and she can't see that for herself. Because she wants to prove so much that, hey, I can do this better than my dad did. I'm smarter than the rest. You know, I'm the one who should have been in charge in the first place. And the shit's gonna come back to bite her because she's already pissing off people on her council, doing crazy stuff. So gotta see where that's gonna go. Um there was a little twist from the book. Uh, Jamie went to go see Brom, and her, him, and Brom are going on a mission um, to the south. Which curious to see how that's gonna all work out and how that's gonna um, come about. We got to see Brienne and Pod, um, comical as always. They happen to run into Sansa, who denied coming with Brienne, of course, because Littlefinger did his thing. He manipulated the situation and let him know, hey. You said that you were um, sworn to protect um, Sansa. Well, let me look at your history. You swore to protect Remley. How'd that work out? You swore to um, protect... Uh, was it... Who Who did he say next? Uh, the king. He swore... She swore oath to King Drawfee. How'd that go? Now you swore to Catelyn Stark. Hmm. That helped. Ah, uh, Yeah. So you think that the Sansa really should come with you? And of course Sansa's like, no, I don't want to go with you. Because Sansa's a dumbass. And hey, I remember her name now. Instead of just calling her dumbass, which is what she is. Just dumbass. She's like buying into the Kool-Aid that Littlefinger is giving her to sip. And... Yeah, she, she goes with them, a fight starts with Brienne, they had to run and escape, Pod's an idiot with the horse, that was pretty funny, but, so now what is Brienne gonna do? None of the Stark girls wants to go with her, she, the people who she swore to protect, or swore fealty to, they're all dead, <laughs> what's to do, what's to do with Brienne, that's gonna be an interesting situation, um, and make sure that I am not missing anything major. That's about it, except for at the end, where we see Danny's dragon, um, Drogon, come back. I'm curious to see where they're going to go, how they're going to execute that. That's going to be interesting to see um, the end payoff, if it's going to be anything near to what it was in the books. Um, but the swerve with Jamie and Bronn, that should be interesting. Uh, Tyrion's trip to them, that should be interesting. Oh, we, I almost forgot. We got introduced to some more people of Dorne. We got to be introduced to more of the Martells. Um, we got to be introduced to the ruler. Um, we saw the Viper's girls speak to him, talking about the Sand Snakes and stuff like that, and how all of Dorne wants them to go to war. You know, they're not happy with the fact that nothing has happened yet. They're not moving. They're trying to, like, start a war. And he's just like, yo, we need to, like not do this the wrong way we got to do this the right way things will be settled don't worry about it is he i i really like him i really like the ruler of dorn because in the book you can tell um although he was kind of written to be more older i think he's a much younger guy in this um version of him 
But, oh, no, I almost missed another major plot that I'm going to get to real quick. But um, one of the things that I find cool about that character is that he he's very thoughtful. He thinks before he acts. Whereas the rest of his family, they act before they, you know, they're, they're more reactionary than anything. Um, so that should be curious to see how this is going to go. Last thing that I will touch on that I almost forgot was Jon Snow. Jon Snow is now the head of the Rebellion's Watch. After he um, had a conversation with the uh, king, with Stannis. Stannis wasn't pleased with him actually helping out um, Mance Raider by showing her wisdom uh, and things like that. He he didn't really find that appealing. One second, my phone just went off right in the middle of this. Back in a sec. Because I figure that I'm already at the 15 minute mark. I'm not starting this over. So really quick. So they have their conversation. And you see that Stannis was like. He's kind of impressed by the fact that he did that. He still wants um, John to persuade him. So we get to where they have to do a vote for the Night's Watch. Um, the Night's Watch is all about. Uh, they could, they're voting either for Alistair. Or I forget the other guy's name. And then of course. Uh. John's boy steps up and is like, yo, John was the one who took command after Sir Alistair went down. He, yo, he's well respected. Who cares? You know, you say all you want, but he's done everything he could to save the Night's Watch. Um, you guys need to pay attention to that and realize that John is the man here. You guys really need to pay attention to that. And so with that speech, John Stark was made the... And a nice watch was going to start some shit because lots of people don't like him in there. But this sets up things for Stannis to try to lean on him a bit. Now, we'll see how that all works out. Alright, I'm done. Now I can address my phone calls and stuff. Uh, anyway, as always, sorry for the long rant, but lots was going on this episode. You guys hit me up, let me know what you think, and I'll holler at you later. This is your boy Black Megas in the Mount. Deuces.